Hello Space Fans, welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. As if the Kepler Space Telescope hasn't unveiled enough about weird exoplanets, astronomers have found another doozy in the data. This one's called Kepler 413b and it's a little off its rocker. Now we've become used to seeing exoplanets with pretty small orbits around its stars, but Kepler 413b's orbit is not much smaller than Mercury, it's at 66 days. However, it's not the period of the orbit that's so weird, but the way that the axial tilt is affected by it. Now, Kepler 413b is actually orbiting two stars, one orange dwarf and one red dwarf. Now, orbiting two stars is not really something that is unheard of. We've seen this before. But as you can see from the top-down view, the orbit here is not perfectly elliptical like we're used to seeing. Its orbit is moving and processing. Looking at the orbit from the side is what really made astronomers scratch their heads. As you can see, the orbit of Kepler 413b does not follow directions very well. And by directions, I mean the ecliptic plane of the stars. Since Kepler observes exoplanets by the transit method, that is observing the dip of light that goes down once the planet moves in front of the star, it was a little weird for astronomers that would see this transit happen three times in 180 days, and then stop. Not only that, but it started back up again, and that's what really caused astronomers to wonder what was going on. Now, scientists are still trying to figure out all the details, but what could be happening is that there is either a third yet very dim star, or even another planet that's causing Kepler 413b's orbit to be all wibbly wobbly. Now, as many of you have seen in previous shows, I'm totally stoked about the Gaia spacecraft to get online and start working. The One Billion Star Surveyor was launched in December of last year by the European Space Agency and has just reached the Lagrangian 2 point in orbit. Now, right now, it's just in the beginning processes of getting its systems online and tested before this five year survey of a billion stars. As part of this first test, we're given a little treat which is a star cluster in the Large Magellanic Clouds, which is a satellite galaxy that can be seen from the Southern Hemisphere. Unfortunately for those like me who are immensely eager to see what Gaia does, this will also be one of the last images we get from the spacecraft for some time. Now getting Gaia completely online is going to take several months now that it's reached its home at the L2 point. This is going to include testing out that 1 billion pixel camera, as well as calibrating the mirrors that will be collecting light from the galactic neighborhood. Now, once Guy officially starts its observation mission, it will be observing 1 billion stars. That's 1% of our Milky Way at least 70 times. Now, this will give astronomers many opportunities to study the fluctuations in luminosity, in color, and position of the stars that are most proximal to our own. Once the survey is done, it'll have nearly one petabyte of data to be processed. That's one million gigabytes of information to help understand where we're at in the Milky Way. Finally, a blast from the past. Well, sort of. Back in 1999, the Chandra X-ray Observatory first imaged Centaurus A, which is a galaxy originally discovered by Scottish astronomer James Dunlop in 1826. Over the years, Chandra's gone back to Sen A to make more and more observation of this brilliant galaxy. Now, as you can imagine, over the years, we developed new and better ways to process data that's coming down from our space telescopes, and Chandra is no different. Here, we're able to see a collection of nine and a half days of observation in the X-ray wavelengths. The red coloring is for low energy X-rays, whereas the green for medium and blue for high energy. When they're combined in this image, we get this amazing view of the jet of matter shooting out from the giant black hole at the galactic nucleus. It's just amazing at what we're able to learn from data that's nearly 15 years old, and it's very telling that we're in a remarkable time in astronomy. More and more data is being collected from better and better observatories. As time goes on and methods improve, one can only speculate on what we'll be able to uncover about the universe even if it's been staring us in the face all this time. Well, that's it for this week's Space Fans. Thank you all for watching, and as always, keep looking up.
Now don't forget to join Tony and I tonight for Space Fan News Live. That's where we're going to discuss the topics of this video and also respond to questions and comments that you leave either below or in the event page over on Google+. That's going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, or 2 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So leave those questions and comments and we will see you later. Subscribe, thumbs up for the TARDIS, and we'll see you later.